I would say the most immediate one would be that my father is a writer. And I think part of it is in the same way that uh, you have, you know, people whose parents are doctors, they become doctors uh, or engineers, they become engineers or sometimes fight against it as well. Uh, but I would say that that has been a big influence, you know, and I think psychologically part of it is that you see it being done. So it's not this big mystery, you know. So I grew up in a house where I could see my father sitting down and writing surrounded by books. Um, as opposed to for, for, I mean, you know, I, I get into conversations with a, with a lot of uh, younger Kenyans now um, where they'll send me an email and ask, how can I become a writer? Right. You know, because they don't have um, they don't have that example. You know, so but for me, I had that example. So that that would be one. But I, but I also like to believe I've been a writer anyway. Um, and part of it would be by wanting to speak of of things um, that impacted me as I grew up, or questions I had. Um, of of one of them would be, um, for example, the school I went to, called Genia High School, was a used to be a concentration camp. And by concentration camp, I mean there used to be a place where the Mau Mau or suspected Mau Mau people were held. So it was a high, it was a secondary school that was surrounded in the 1950s and so on and so forth. It would have been had a fence around it, but also have very, very deep trenches with spikes uh, around it as well. You know, because the whole idea was to keep the Mau Mau from interacting with anybody else uh, at the same time where whenever I would go to visit my grandmother, you know, we'd walk, it was maybe like a five mile walk, would be walking through landscapes that, are, that, that still bear the scars uh, of, the, of, the, of the fight for independence. So you can imagine as a child, I mean, <laughs> wouldn't that be the most curious thing, uh, trying to understand how this, this thing you're walking through uh, at some point uh, carried, um, you know, carried a death sentence for people um and and that carries so much history right you know yeah so so I, I think such questions i think would have led me to uh to being a writer regardless i mean when i was growing up i'd just go to my father's office and read whatever i could lay my hands on you know so so i, I remember reading like dh lawrence when i was about seven or eight uh dh lawrence Karl marx james baldwin richard wright um, Cloud Brown, who wrote uh, the book um, Child in a was it? yeah Child in a Promised Land, uh, but then of course at that age, of course I would read, but then I, it doesn't mean I would get the content, right? Or I would, it, it's not like I would form a very deep analysis of these books, um, but it, but I do remember even the idea of description, thinking about description uh, from D. H. Lawrence. Um, so then I, then as I grew older. Uh, then, I, then I got into books, uh, the African Writer series, you know, Chinua Achebe and so on and so forth. But then I also got into reading popular uh, Kenyan fiction. Uh, for example, David Milo's, uh, <laughs> David Milo's, what is it called? Um, uh, After four thirty, my dear bottle, you know, those little chap books, you know, that you know today we might call pornography, <laughs> you know, but but that's what we are reading, you know, and we, you know, I remember in high school you'd you'd find somebody reading my dear bottle. Uh, and it would be in between things fall apart or hidden, you know, hidden in the pages of Shakespeare and so on and so forth. Um, then, yeah, so, so, so a lot of reading, um, you know, until now when, when I got older and began writing myself, I could think of, uh, I can think of writers that became a big influence like Gerald Barracks. Uh, Gerald Barracks is an African-American poet. A lot of people don't know him. Or he's not, he's not as popular as other as, 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 as African-American writers. Uh, but he's the first person I read whom I could relate to because he could tell a story, a simple story or a complicated story uh, in, po in poetry form. Um, I don't know. I'd, I'd like Most writers have just been influenced by a lot more writers than I can even name or think of right now. Um, well getting published i mean you know, that the, the usual you know the, the usual uh, obstacles that writers face you know getting published uh but in my particular case the idea of that my books will appear first in the u.s uh and then not be published where i grew up is a, is a that, to me that's a huge crisis um you know so right now if you went to kenya to buy any of my books the only one you'd find is nairobi heat 
right? You know, and there, there's a loss there. There's a loss there because uh, even though I think of my audience as international, I think of my audience as, as African-American and, and also, and it, as much as I think of them as African-American as, uh, in terms of my audience, I also think as uh, uh, Kenya and, you know, and Kenyans and, uh, and Africans in general as my audience. So it's almost like walking uh, without a crutch, if you will. Um, then the other issues of ex ex existential questions, you know, of, um, of what language am I writing in, who is reading me, um, the questions of um, if, I, if I'm writing popular fiction, um, how, uh, how is that read in the body of the African literary tradition, right? Um, yeah. I would say it's about beauty. Like, I, I, love, I love the idea of, um, of writing beautifully, right? I, I disagree a lot with the idea that, uh, that African art or African literature is functional, right? because that, that's the understanding of it, you know, that, you know, that people would, let's say, you know, they would have a mask so they could put it in, a, they could have it in a ceremony or they would build a drum, you know, so they would build a drum, you know, so they can, I don't know, drum at a funeral or, you know, or talk to each other or talk in drums and so on and so forth. I, I do think that as a that as a matter of of pure existence, that Africans were creating uh, art for its beauty, right? At some point, somebody must have said, "Well, I'm going to build this drum because the sound is going to be beautiful, right?" And then the other things follow. Um, so I would say, yeah, I would say, I'd say I'm more interested in creating beauty. But now, because of, for example, I talked about the landscape. You know, so if, if, even if I try to talk about that beautiful landscape as I walk to my grandmother's house, right, you know, that, that contains, you know, that, that contains the scars of, of history, I cannot abstract beauty, I cannot abstract that history from what I'm trying to describe. Um, so I would say, yeah, I, I want to create beauty, but I think that beauty by definition will carry uh, the history and the politics of the day. Yeah, so I, I think of Nairobi Heat as a found book. You know, in poetry we talk about a found poem, which is, you know, uh, you can put things here and there that you find along the way, you patch a poem, right? Um, I, so I think of Nairobi Heat that way because at that point I was in Madison, Wisconsin. Um, I was a student there and I lived next to a stadium, to a football stadium. And it, it, because I lived close to the football stadium, there's a lot of uh, drinking, if you will. And one day I was coming home, uh, I lived on the second floor of, of an apartment building, and there was a white woman in a cheerleader outfit passed by my doorstep. I didn't know her, I had no idea who she was. Uh, so, you know, I called a friend of mine, I was like, what do I do? You know, because, you know, my, the, my African sensibility would have been just to help her until she sobers up. But I called a friend of mine and he's like, no, whatever you do, don't do it, you know, just call the cops. Uh, so that's what I did. I called the cops, and the cop who came was a um, was an African American, and then of course they also came with an ambulance, right? You know, but at some point we're in a stairway. You know, the white cheerleader has thrown up on the on the stairs. Uh, but at any rate, so we are standing there. This white woman in a cheerleader outfit, me and the African American cop. Uh, yeah, and, 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 and as soon as they left, I call up, I called my the same friend, and I said, hey. I think I've found a plot for a novel. But at that point, I thought it would be a short story because we've been planning to, uh, to write short stories. There was a, I forget the, the, literary, the literary contest then, but we wanted to write short stories uh, for that literary contest because we were broke and we needed money. Anyway, so I called him and I said, hey, yeah, I found uh, the story that's gonna win, <laughs> that's gonna win this, this competition. Um, but at any rate, when you look at Nairobi Heat, it's about, uh, you know, a white woman in this case who is who is murdered. Uh, the cop who is investigating the case is African American, and the suspect is African. I hope well. I mean, I cannot say anything but well. <laughs> no, I know it, it's, it's been received. Uh, it's been received well, uh, and also in surprising ways, right? Um, I know of some book clubs that read Nairobi Heat that have nothing to do with African literature or even, or even Africanness. Uh, I know of one reading group where they, they decided to do an international reading, uh, I don't know, reading tour, if you will, 
because in honor of a friend of theirs who had passed away because of cancer, right? You know, so you know, but it, on the other hand, um, it's 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 taught as an African book as well. I know it's taught in um, in universities throughout the world. Um, it's been translated into German, some of my work into German, uh, soon into French, into Turkish, and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, yeah, and most flattering for me, actually, most flattering and most importantly, I've seen a few Kenyan dissertations, you know, dissertations by Kenyan students or African students uh, on my work. I mean, that, that's, I think that for me, that as a writer, that's the most satisfying thing to see uh, young scholars, you know, spending their intellectual capital on trying to understand what I'm trying to say in my writing.